Hey everybody, what's up? Circus here coming at you with another power rankings video. This week it's going to be a little bit spicy. And for that reason, I bought, brought in Rye to join me. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm subbing in for Kamel. I am Kamel. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So if you don't know what we do here, uh, each week we track decks and see how they perform in tournaments. And then we assign them points based on how they did in the tournament, right? So... If a deck gets first place, it gets six points. If it's second place, it gets four points. If it gets the top four, it gets two points, and the top eight gets a single. Top eight gets a single point. Um, so the the tournaments uh, that we're tracking this week were Battle Phase Monday, Battle Phase EU, Battle Phase Friday, <laughs> Battle Phase Sunday, uh, the Pharaohs Cast Germany, God Metal Weekly, the Battle Series, and the Dual World Weekly. Now the thing that these all these tournaments have in common is that they're rounds of Swiss into a top cut. They have one deck with a six card side where they can sub in a skill if they want to. So that's important that we keep them uh, consistent like that. So the data that we're presenting is consistent in its nature. So without further ado, here comes the list. The top ranking deck of the week is Shira Neos. <laughs> what? Wait a second, That's, that, that goes against the script. Take it down. <laughs> what happened there? That is unexpected. Yeah super super underrated deck to be completely honest um the uh anthox won i think it was a battle phase monday with it um and ever since then people have been copying it making changes to it uh mostly it's the volcanic neos that we see or if some people want to call it uh invoke neos as it were um but the, i believe this is all the neos variants uh put together right there, uh what we find is uh when they get entered in terms of people that do the data collection for each tournament if there's Neos in it, they just call it Neos. But most of them, the ones that won the tournaments, were definitely Volcanic Neos. Yeah, so I, I think it was four of these were Volcanic and four weren't Volcanic, but they were still basically Neos. I, it's I remember Neos the one, with different things. Yeah, I remember, I remember the Purta Plan. Yeah. yeah, the Purta Plan was still the same thing. You have like your Crimson Fox and all that, but instead of using Bacon Saver, they're using Purta Plan. You know, it's it's like three or four card difference between all of them. They're, they're all still basically Neos. Yeah, I think one was the Give and Take Neos. You're yeah, the give and take. That's you know? that, I love that deck so much because it <laughs> it is hilarious when it goes off. And I think there's, one was, there's no reason it should be as consistent as it is, but somehow every time there was also um, the give and take. And what? Oh, my favorite Neos. You see that my one? Yeah, my favorite hero Neos with yeah. the uh, Necro Valley tech. Um, no, it's it's a super super underrated uh, deck right now, and people keep you know not really giving it the. Um, um, the respect that it's earned, but you know, on demand Necro Valley is very powerful with my favorite hero. Um, the power to go into any Alistair invoke monster, um, yep. especially Purgatrio, which is in itself the most broken card, as well as having Karma Cut, Rageki Break, all the counter traps, um, and having that discard material from Volcanic Shell. It is very, very powerful in this meta. Yeah, it had eight tops, and two of them were wins, so that that's pretty strong right there. Uh, we're yeah. going to look at the conversion rate on the deck. It was pretty strong, too. Uh, overall, got played 33 times with uh, 12 making the top 32. With, with, so that's 36%. That's that's pretty strong. And then of the 33, eight of those made it to the top eight. That's 24%. That's a very that's high conversion rate compared yeah. to other decks you're going to be seeing. Most of them and are the, in single digits. The deck digits. is honestly not that bad. Like uh, most of the, like we said, like uh, the, the in its best, probably, you know, get to the karma cuts and everything. Like, yeah, that's super expensive. But to give, like, you know, the we can see how splashable it is with the Purta plants, with the give and take. Um, sometimes you just need Neos itself, <laughs> and then you're Neos and, and Invoker, and you're good. So really, really kind of a cheaper deck on, on the tier list. Well, it's funny. I did a, a Staples video a while back about deck engines. And at the time, I'm like, you got to get Light Sworn. You got to get Invoked. I'm like, and this last one, I know it's out of fashion right now, but you might want to think about getting the Neos <laughs> engine. <Yeah. laughs> now you just combine the two engines and you're good. Yeah. All right. In second place. In second place last week also is Shira Nui making no movement whatsoever with 15 points. Uh, it's best with, uh, with second place in uh, Battle Phase Sunday and Battle Phase EU. Other than that. Just a bunch of top eights, but it's Shira Nui just putting in the work as usual. Yeah, I mean, it's a very consistent deck. The deck relies heavily on its back row. We are in a back row heavy meta. Um, it's core. I mean, same things we say every week. The core engine is super yep. small, so you can adapt your back row to whatever you want it to be. Um, this deck, it's not the best deck in the meta, I would say, 
but it's not the worst. It's in between. It could have very easily been first place and probably overtaken Neos, um, but it bricked <laughs> the game right. that we watched when the when it lost to the uh, Synchro deck. Um, so you know, it's 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 just Shiranui. Um, you know, Shiranui is one of those decks where where it will always have high representation because everyone has it now. It's just so old. Yeah. Um, and the back row will always be adaptable enough that it's going to be somewhere in the top deck. So good deck overall. Yeah, I mean, like you said, everyone has it now. It's just at this point, if you don't have it, it, it seems kind of weird. Uh, yeah. But looking at the conversion rate, as you can see here, 129 <laughs> times it was played in the everyone past week. Everyone has it. <laughs> top 32, uh, 27 tw top 32s for a conversion rate of 21%. That's not bad. Yeah. But to make it to the top eight is only six, and that's a 5% <laughs> conversion rate. So Hey, listen, the fact that 129 people entered and has a 21% conversion rate, that's good enough for me. <laughs> when, you're, when you're the most popular deck, your conversion rate is always going to be inflated. Well, th that's the thing, because everybody's like, oh, the, you know, look at how low the conversion rate is. Well, it's like, even if 32 made it to the top 32, it's still not going to have a super high conversion rate, yeah, you know, and that's, that's just, just not going to happen. So That's what happens when you're like, the, yeah, it's just the, the deck everyone plays. Yeah. All right, in third place, third place last week, this, uh, not a lot of movement on the, on the rankings this week. Uh, Black Wings with 13 points. Again, no victories, but... You can see uh, some top fours and top eights. I mean, not real strong finishes, but enough to accumulate, uh, you know, a third place. Yeah, Blackwing's another deck that uh, relies heavily on Necro Valley right now. Um, Necro Valley, one of the one of the best field spells in the game right now. Low key, so many graveyard based uh, strategies. Uh, Neos, Shiranui, um, even Dark Magician to get their navigation out, it's it's helpful enough. Uh, so, you know, Black Wings will always be that OTK deck that's all reliable. You know, they're they're super consistent. Um, they can search their Necro Valley. They have Blackbird Close, which is phenomenal because you just have no idea until it's too late that they have it. So you always have to play around. Oh, I hate that card because, yeah, you, <laughs> you try to make a play and it's just like, oh, and they Bam, summon close. a monster. and <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, barring a ban list, it's probably just going to continue to be like the best OTK deck in the game. All right, and then the next one on the list, uh, fourth place, not, no movement from last week. Uh, Heroes with 11 points. Again, no win. Uh, got second place in the battle phase Monday. Fourth place in battle phase Monday. And then a lot of finishes in the dual world weekly. Um, just putting in work, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, they, they um, not too long ago, they got Koga. Uh, they started using form change more so that, you know, they've got more like scrapping power. Um, and, you know, we see a lot more funny enough Trinity kills these days, which is hilarious when it happens. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, ultimately, you know, like, uh, the, unlike Black Wings, they don't really have access to Necro Valley, searchable Necro Valley. Um, and again, we're in kind of that graveyard based meta. So I, I always kind of expect them to be a little bit under Black Wing. Of course, them having the ability to constantly dodge effects with mass changes, form changes, stuff like that. Um, and having just more space for back row other than just having the Blackbird close. Um, they'll always be super relevant. Um, but I think having what what puts Black Wings a little bit above them, just barely, is being able to play the Necro Valley. All right, all right. Looking at the conversion rate on this thing, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, yeah, top thirty-two conversion rate of forty percent. That's just outrageous. Yeah. Uh, top eight conversion rate of nine percent. Um, it does pretty well. I mean, we see it. It has. I wouldn't say a lot of versatility, but it does have some plays it can make. You going in the oh, tree, sure. going into the adoration. Yeah, yeah. You know, it feels. It seems like it, it can deal with different decks. Yeah, uh, and the other thing we have to remember is heroes still don't have Stratos and adoration fully released yet. Um, so not as many people have access to the deck. Um, so you know, once we have more people having more access to it, obviously there's going to be more theory crafting going behind it, as well as more just more people in general playing a deck. The fact that there's 43 people playing this deck is kind of insane, <laughs> right? Since it's locked behind such a paywall. Yeah. All right. Next on the list, I almost thought, is this deck even going to make the list when I was compiling the data? <laughs> Dark Magician, fifth place, down four spots from last week. What a drop! Ten points. Again, look at this. Top eight action. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven top eights. <clears throat> That's like over uh, most of its points right there. So yeah. um, I don't know well, what to say it's, about you know, that. It's, it's the curse of being, you know, this is like one of the two most played decks, them and Shiranui. Um, 
you know, Dark Magicians have always kind of been that one note, you know, we're playing around the circle, we're playing the navigation. Um, there isn't that many, there's not that much space for outplay. There mm-hmm. is outplay maneuverability, but not that much. Um, so, you know, every, every tournament that people go into, you know, the, the big three they're thinking of countering, the Shira Nui, that's where we're seeing a lot of Karma Cuts and uh, Necro Valleys, the Dark Magicians, that's where you're seeing a lot of Cosmics in the side, as well, other other ways to get rid of Circle and Crystrons. <laughs> Even though you don't see, we're probably not going to see Crystrons on here, everyone takes System down just because they're so powerful. Right. Um, if you don't have a side deck card um, to to prevent them. And, you know, cards like Chaos Hunter, and to a degree, lesser degree, Lancia, are, are also pretty annoying to just deal with dark magician they're just common tech cards that you see um, because these decks are so powerful to begin with and this deck is single-handedly keeping witchcrafters out of the meta <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> all right let's take a look at the conversion right here we got um uh, sorry about that there we go uh there we go top 32 conversion of 21 percent Top eight conversion rate of 6%. 111 people played it this week. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's, that's a few people. A few people. All right. This is going to make a lot of people happy out there. Hey. I can feel people fist pumping already. Next on the list, Dragoonity. Look there at that. Go. Sixth place with 10 points. It's only two finishes. It's basically one or two guys. It's like two yeah. guys. It, <laughs> hey, dedicated fan base, you know? Uh, what is it, seven enters? Holy moly. Yeah. Um, the, deck, the deck's not really not that bad. Uh, you know, the only, the only problem with the deck is once you finish your OTA, o, OTK combo, you're not actually guaranteed to OTK. <laughs> right. Because sometimes you're just standing out there with your big Ascalon, 3,300 damage, and then that's it. Um, you kind of need that additional, you know, either that 1,000 attack monster or the the uh, the uh, magic card, the spear, to get you over 4K to OTK with. Um, that's usually the problem. Usually, when you look at black wings or heroes, once they clear your, if they cleared your board, that means they're going to OTK you. They're just in that board state. If Dragoonity right. cleared your board, it just means they made an Ascalon and they wiped your monsters, um, which doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna you're gonna get OTK'd at that point. Um, so it's definitely one of the worst for OTK decks, but it's still pretty good, and it's really not that costly to make. Well, I, I called a tournament today, and I saw Dragoonity be, beat Witchcrafters twice to timeout. <laughs> the Witchcrafters <laughs> lost twice to, to timeout. Time At oh both times, God. I think the Witchcrafters had them on the ropes, so right. if you have a hard time beating Witchcrafters, you might have a hard time. Just time them out forehead. What <laughs> right. the... no, it's, it's, Just... it's a good deck. I think the only thing kind of keeping the deck um, you know, other than them not being able to OTK, is the fact that um, right now we're in a super he- like banish heavy meta mm-hmm. um, with Dark Magician and everything, and Karma Cuts being everywhere, um, and of course Necro Valleys. So the the Askel on the second effect where it dies, it synchro summons another monster right. out of your other thing. Um, if it gets banished, you you lose so much resource out of that Askel on that that one gets banished. Right. Um, so you know, especially, and then also Sphere Kribo being in the meta. <laughs> you whenever whenever Dragonity sets up OTK, that is OTK. If anything happens, they're probably gonna lose the game. And do they run much background? I'm trying to think to the matches I watch. No, I don't they, think they run anything. Do they? they don't have the space. All their cards <laughs> make Ascalon, and then the few tech spaces they have, they need True Nade. They need Forbidden Lance. Okay, they True need Nade, Cosmic yep. Cyclone that's because right, if they yeah. don't have those cards, any amount of disruption, and that's it. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you, you know you can't make like a, gi- a gigantic wall and set your mask changes like heroes. You know you can't. You don't have something like Blackbird clothes. It's just you don't have those cards available to you. Right. <laughs> now you're gonna love the conversion rate on this one. Uh, played seven <laughs> times. Conversion rate of the top 32, 29 percent. Hey, pretty good. Top eight, 29 percent because it's like two guys or one guy just making it through. Dedicated all the time. people, you know. That's, yeah. that's what that's what's up. Yep. All right, and the final one this week we're going to uh, track is Element Saber. Seventh place, down one spot, eight points. Um, yeah, not a whole lot. Yeah, E-Sabers, you know, again, with all the sheer and Nui main decking Lancia, it's still an issue. But another thing, Witchcrafters, this being the heavy, heavy witch, this week and last week being the heavy testing weeks of Witchcrafter, Witchcrafter has an amazing E-Saber matchup. Um and it didn't really seem like many of the uh, Element Saber players kind of adjusted to that. They they kind of stuck with their floodgates um, and stuff like that, where, you know, um, Fiendish Chain was, is pretty much like the best card they had against Witchcrafter. They didn't really take Karma Cut, for example. And when you really think about it, they 
They can't really run Karma Cut. Karma Cut works in Neos, for example, because the Volcanic Neos adds, you know, from the graveyard activate, you add it to your hand. So you just have so much resource to give. While E Saber, you know, they they set everything <laughs> and play Malehu. They don't have a hand to to go for Karma Cut. Right. Um, so it's really interesting. E Saber, it's always kind of like that gate guardian in the meta. It's actually hilarious that it's like the last one on the list. Um, where if your deck's not good enough to beat E Saber, then it's just not good enough for tournament play. Um, but again, they're just, they're not the best deck in the meta. Um, of course, it you know the, a variant of E Saber also won meta weekly. So by no regards is it a bad deck. Um, it just it really had a bad run with, with all the witchcrafters everywhere and people not really adjusting their lists. All right, take a look at the conversion right here. Fifty three times played with the top thirty two conversion at fifteen percent, top eight three percent. It's just, it's old. I think people are tired of it. And oh, yeah. if you can somehow summon two monsters on one turn, you can, you can beat it, you know, cause the melee who's going to flip one down, if you can get another one out and keep your engine going, you know, you can play around it. So it's not, like I said, it's a gatekeeper, but it doesn't stop the meta. It doesn't destroy the meta. You know, I don't think there's any one deck that does that right now. No, not right now. May you could argue, you can make the argument of dark magician. Um, but like, yeah, E, e Saber isn't really. Uh, it, it, when you go into a tournament, you're not really thinking of okay, let me make sure I I make a priority to to counter E Saber because all right. the cards that you're countering other decks for are going to counter E Saber anyway. Like you're going to take Lancy into your side deck anyway, <laughs> which is one of the best cards to use against right. E Saber. So like, you're fine. Well, like uh, a well placed Cosmic Cyclone can disrupt Dark Magician, whereas a well placed Cosmic right. Cyclone didn't do anything against Dark Lords. Mm. Not usually. <laughs> Not well, unless you best play it, but yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, and since everybody's wondering, I, I was just getting some DMs just now, since uh, people are always wondering, where did Crystrons end up? They ended up, that's right, 15th on the list. <laughs> best deck in the game right now. They had a top Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we say it all the time. Crystrons, they suffer from being targeted by all the side deck cards and especially in these tournaments where everything is reliant on the side deck because it's all best of three um swiss um you know not best of ones they're they're going to they're going to rank lower on these types of tournaments um yep. you you look at all these people that win they still have system down in their side deck even though you can see very clearly they're very low representation of Crystron. So already yeah. small player base into not wanting to play the deck because everyone just has system downs and Lancias and all this stuff. They're always going to be low on these lists. Is it a bad deck? No, but it's definitely not the deck I would tell someone that's you know new to the competitive scene. I wouldn't say, yeah, go get Crystrons. They're tier one. They're great. They're awesome. You're going to win so many tournaments yeah. with them because you're not going to win anything with them. <laughs> 36 overall representation, top cut of nine. Uh, that's 25% conversion rate. That's not bad. Uh, top yeah. eight, two, though. So that's a 6% conversion rate into the top yeah. eight. So Makes like sense. you said, system down, Crystron down, it's over. All yeah. right, guys, I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to join us on Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. Check out Gamer Subs. It's like Kool-Aid, but it kicks you in the butt. Um, anything else, Ray? That's it. Bye, YouTube. All right, we'll see you next time.